Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 38 of Crystal Tina's, the Zendidian Crochet Podcast. My name is Tara, and I'm coming to you from White Plains, New York. If you're a new viewer, thank you for checking us out. If you're an old viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you know when new content come out on this channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and Ravelry at Crystal Tina's. It is so good to be back to podcasting. I have literally been having a pile stack up for like the last two months. It's insane how many FOs I have. And I've actually started going through my whips, which is fabulous. One of which I was like, I'm gonna, you know, pr keep doing it. But yeah, I stopped again on it. 2016, that whip was going. One day it will get done. I'm, my, my goal is for the end of the year to get that one done. But I did finish one long whip, so I'm really excited. So let me show you guys these. All right, my first thing is the Knotted Cow. It's a pattern I designed. It's out of Knit Picks Hawthorne Kettle Dye, the Equinox colorway. I knit it on a size US 4, what is it called? 3.5 millimeters. Sorry, I'm really bad at the millimeters. But you can see it a little bit. It's blowing out a little. It's a really simple, simple design. It has a little bit of lace. And you can use one skein of fingerling weight line. I loved knitting this. The only reason it was on the needles for so long was because this was just excellent knitting. Just when I went to pick up and everything, I could just pick this up. I knew the pattern in my head and I went with it. The only problem was at one point I forgot to do like two rows completely out of the pattern. So recently I had to rip the whole thing back and I was like, that's it. This is crazy. And I just knit right through and I'm so glad I did. It looks great. I haven't um, blocked it yet, so it's going to get bigger. Let me see if I do this without ruining my hair too much. So this is without it being blocked. So you know it's going to get a lot bigger. And it's cute. It's a nice, small, simple, easy, fast knit project. Easy to memorize. That's the only reason why I like cows is because they're simple. They're like socks. You can bring them anywhere. And in like a couple of days, you'll have a whole project. I love that. Now, another thing I have finished is my rose socks. Unfortunately, my last episode, I forgot to show you this. I'm really upset about that. But these are the rose socks. They're part of the Golden Girls collection. And you know, Betty White is my favorite Golden Girl. So I had to make this extra special. Some beautiful, simple lace I put in there. I had a little problem because the pattern goes onto the second needle because I did everything magic loop. So it did go into the heel. So I had to put this type of heel. If you purchase the pattern, and want to put a slip stitch heel flap, contact me. I will tell you how to do it. I know how to. I just thought it might be a little complicated actually putting it in the pattern. So um, that's why like fish, kips, he fish lips kiss heel, afterthought heel, they will be perfect with this. But there is a way to do slip stitch heel on this. And then this is, um, oh, all my socks are knit on US1 2.25 needles, unless otherly stated. I think I've one that I'm knitting on a US 1.5. But again, this is US 1. And the yarn is Sweet Sparrow Yarns Blackberry Mousse. I had this left over from, I made a sweater a while ago. I don't remember what it was called. It was a really, Tega, the Tega sweater. That's why I left this. I think it's her hummingbird thing. I don't know. And then this, I'm not sure what colorway this is. Again, this is Lizzie Ann Yarns. I tried to get in contact with them to find out what the yarn is. I lost the ball band for it. I want to say it was Chocolate Kisses. I'm not too sure. They're not really dying now, unfortunately, which I'm really depressed about because they're one of my favorite dyers. Everything's so beautiful and pastel and works great with Sweet Sparrow Yarns. Just, this is just, oh my God, this is just my color palette right here. And what's really fun is, I don't know if you guys are Golden Girls fans, but if you are, you remember the episode of the dance contest, how she's wearing that beautiful dress? I pat on this after that dress. I think the color actually is this one exactly. Like a, or maybe a mix between the two. I don't know. But I had to knit this as the rose sock. This is the second one. Yay. Love them both. Here. Yay. Okay. So my next FO, which since I'm doing the Golden Girls, I might as well show you the Sophia sock. I knit a second Sophia sock. I'm actually on my third one. I am addicted to that pattern. It is the perfect pattern for anything, especially self-striping yarn. I love it. It has a little bit of lace, a little bit of cable, and a lot of stock in it. So it's a very simple knit just to bring out with you if you want to 
do a fast knit on the go. Wait, what? It goes on this side, I think. Okay, sorry about that. A little fidgety. But that is the Sophia sock. And this is on Stroll Tweed. You know, I love that yarn on the Marine Heather colorway. It's the second one. It goes down the one side. And I knit this previously in the Cozy Knitter, the Advent Color one, and had like 24 stripes. It was gorgeous on that. And you know what? I'm going to show you, since I'm already telling you about this one, even though this is not an FO, I will show you this one. This is Knit Picks Felici on the Punch Buggy. I am currently knitting this one. And these are um, carbons. I don't know. I have a link down below in the down bar. I love these needles for knitting socks. I have definitely realized that my favorite needles for socks are now signature and then carbons. I got to figure out how to say that. I'm blanking right now. Don't mind me. I'm tired. But that's on the punch buggy in self-striping. How beautiful is that? I just got the toe now. I'm done with this one. And it is in my Katie did bag. This is one I bought from her years ago. I love anything with Eiffel Tower I'm obsessed with. So as soon as I saw this, I had to buy it. And it's got my favorite colors in it, mauve and teal. It had to come home with me. It's one of my favorite sock bags too. So the neck, oh, come on. All right, the next sock, I know. This is crazy how many FOs I have right now. The next one is because of we um the crazy sock lady is do, going to start crazy um crazy sock camp summer sock camp that is going to start in june i thought it was going to start in like july i don't know why i thought that so now she's doing a cow this month to basically get their socks off the needles so this one was one of my socks to get off the needles i have seven of them y'all seven i'm never going to get them off the needles it's insane so i got one down so i'm down to six now we will see. But this one is my Scrappy Good Time Socks. Another one I can't stop knitting. In Moon Glow yarn, Moon Glow Dye Works yarn. And it's her Crazy Cauldron set, which the Crazy Sock Lady inspired. Wow, that's a mouthful. And I love this. I actually have enough yarn left over to make another set of socks. And I forgot the pattern. Nitty Natty was um, knitting it. And I think I'm going to do that for sock camp. Just to get rid of the rest of this yarn. But it's so pretty. I might actually have enough of this gray to get a third pair of socks out. Because I have a lot left over. Because this did not use too much. I think maybe 25 grams at the most for both socks. So this is a really good stash buster. And I think each mini is like one gram of sock. One gram or two grams. No, I think it's two grams. So if you have small grams left over, this is the perfect sock to knit. Now I did another one in the same pattern, but I decided to spice it up a little bit because of, I love this colorway. This is beautiful yarn. It's called Afternoon Tea by Mandy's Makings. I'm obsessed with it. It was part of a share a pair, but I decided to design a cowl and socks out of it. I also bought another set that was not a share a pair, but it was a sock set. And then I got many, so I'm going to probably make a shawl out of that. But I love these colors. They are gorgeous. This yellow just sings to me. I'm not a yellow fan, but I like this nice pale pastel yellow. And it looks beautiful with the blue. Funny thing is, though, when you're knitting it, you can't see the blue. I'm not kidding you. It comes out amazingly in pictures. But while I was knitting, I was having the hardest time trying to decide if I was knitting the blue or if I was knitting the speckle. I don't know why. It was just one of those tricks that light play on you. So what I did was I did two repeats over here. And then I went back to the sock and I count how many rows for that pattern was. I went from my 70, I think it was 14. So I subtracted 14 from it. I just knit to that and then I added in this. I'm going to actually add to the pattern. This as um, an alternative version you could add, an alternative version you can knit. <laughs> Hit myself in the head. Why not? So, but I loved how this came out. And it was fun because I, 
don't really like vanilla. I, I like vanilla socks, but then I feel like I should be knitting a pattern if I'm knitting something. So this was fabulous because I got my vanilla sock out over here. You know, but then I still had a little bit of a pattern in it. I know I got to get over the whole vanilla sock issue, but until then, this is what I got. So this is my last FO. I am so happy right now. You have no idea how happy and how good it felt to get this off the needles. It's crazy. This is my waiting for rain shawl. Let me see who the designer is for that. Because I'm mostly design knitting my stuff, so I forget the other things. Oh, I have one more. I have one more FO, actually. It's over there. See, this is why I should have looked at my stuff. Oh, I don't even have her name. Oh, let me look it up. I'm so sorry. I don't have her name in my show notes. One minute. I'm so sorry about that. So basically what I did with this was... I, um... There's another version of the shawl called Hacking Waiting, Waiting for Rain. And I remember seeing it at Rhineback and I fell in love with it. It had all these stripes with the lace. So, okay. The designer is Sylvia McFadden. Let me show you the pattern page. Since I got the phone out, I might as well. So that's what it looks like as just the plain shawl. Now, I did the striped version. And there's not really telling you how to knit it. I'm going to put in my pattern page. I got to actually sit there and count what I did to get the striping exactly. I'm so OCD. I actually sat there and looked at the picture of the stripes that the woman made. I don't even think she made it. I think someone else did. And then I counted how they did the stripes and figured out where it went in between the lace panels because a lot of short rows when you do the lace part. So I just sat there counting. So I'm going to write in my show notes how many rows of each color to do. So you don't have to go crazy looking at the picture like I had to. You could just go to my project page. But I'm trying to figure out which side is the right side. Bloody hell. I'm going to say this is the right side. So, oh good, it is showing up the green. I wanted something green and blue because I have a lot of, like my main winter jacket is teal. So I wanted something heavy. That's why I did it in sport weight yarn. It is in Galileo in jewel and no gem and lunar. I think lunar is the blue and gem is the green. I might be wrong. It's nitpicks Galileo again. And I knit this on a size US 5 3.75. So when I bought the yarn, you could tell the difference. Again, when I put it in, it was a little hard to see but I think you could see it, right? Oh, when I go fast, you see it better, I think. All the way in the back. And um, I have this little thing here. Little cluster there. Because that's all I had left. Was that. And the sad part is, if you look, when I'm not doing the lace part, it was like seven rows, I think. I just had seven rows left and one lace panel to finish this. This has been on the needles since, let me see. It's sad. It really is sad. 2020. It took me two years to knit this for my OCD. And I've been wanting to knit this for more than, I'm going to say about five or six years. I've been wanting to knit this since I saw it. Don't ask me why I stopped. I thought I had a lot more to knit, but it was literally just that. And then in another version of the shawl, someone had the Pico bind off, which is really cool because it's a very large one. And I did that. So I took like two different um, styles from the Waiting for Rain. Well, maybe she had it in the stripe. I don't know. Did she have it in the stripe? Let me just see. Out of curiosity. No, they did a regular bind off. Yeah. So I did do it different. Oh, no, no. Okay. The main picture of the stripe one. She did have it. So I did, I did exactly like the shawl. I loved this one. I fell so in love with it. I might make it a lighter version so I would wear it during the spring because I loved it. It was so beautiful. It's such an easy knit. All you have to do is learn how to read charts. And um, basically with a chart, you go from the right to the left. And it was just so simple to do. I loved it. And it was the same chart over and over again, basically, but she would make it a little bit longer each time. And you just have to remember to, I, what I did was I put stitch markers every time I had to turn it. I mean, it's easy to see where you had to turn, but I just wanted to make sure I was precise. So I put stitch markers on each side when I was doing the turning 
and it came out fine. I didn't have any problems. I didn't make one mistake on that part. I think I probably messed up a um, garter stitch, believe it or not, but the lace I was doing great with. But look how beautiful that lace is. It's just glorious. And I love how it goes on one side, then it goes on the other, then it goes in the middle. It's, I love this shawl. Let's see what it looks like on me. So now I can take that little progress keeper. This is blocked. I just put it back from where I knew where it went to. I'm wearing too much dark clothing right now. You can't see. I know. Weird me wearing dark clothing. I don't know. I got the shirt and I just fell in love with it. I love the ruffles. So, <laughs> and I figured it would go with a lot of my sweaters. Unfortunately, the ruffles are so big. They don't go in the sweater. So it's very odd that I'm wearing black. I used to work at Bloomingdale's and that's all we wore. So now I really can't stand the color anymore because 13 years of all I was allowed to wear was black. You know, so it's very odd that I'm wearing this, but I do love the shirt. It's gorgeous. Right. Oh, and I have, wait, I have two more FOs. Well, four more, but they're the same exact pattern. All right. So the kitchen sink shop is doing a yearly um, dishcloth thing. So every month, if you subscribe to her newsletter, go check her out. She's amazing. Go, um, she basically, she gives you a free pattern for a dishcloth. And last year I failed miserably. I think I did three or four months and then I stopped. And then I, this year I knit one or two more months. I'm going to knit both years this year. It's going to happen. So now I am on the March one. I think it's, no, I don't know which month was which, but go to her. They're free right now. She, the ones that she does the previous month, they're on Ravelry for free. This month, which is May, you can only get through the newsletter. So at the end of May, you can get that on Ravelry. But sign up for so you can get the June one because it will come in early and it's so much fun to knit. So I think this one is Emily's Garden. I knit this on Knit Picks, Dishy, Multi, and Solid. This is the colorway Dandelion Patch. And it's a US 6, 4 millimeter. I knit all my hand towels in that. So that's the dandelion patch. And then this one is, what is it? Verdigris, I think. I love that green. It's so much fun. I didn't, yeah, these were March because I did green for St. Patrick's Day. That's what it was. And so it's kind of like a pot of gold. That's why I did that one. Now, this one was April. And <laughs> hi, Nikki. <laughs> It's like, you want to say hi? Hmm? Hi. <laughs> Sneaking around. All right. Now this one is the Shire in Sailboat. And um, again, Knit Picks, Multi Dishy. And then Dew Drop in Regulant Dishy. That's what the pattern looks like. I'm usually not knitting both patterns, but I loved... Um, pattern twice, but I love them so much. I decided to knit one in multi and one in regular. Oh, it's mother's day. You want to show me the blue and I got the pretty work over there. It's blowing out unfortunately, but the color is amazing on it. It's like an iced mauve. I've never seen anything like that. And then it like a jadeite base. Gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. <laughs> now he's got a scooter. I'm in trouble. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, so I think, oh, there's one more. I got it right back. I should have asked him to get it for me. Sorry about that. All right, I finished my second nice and easy shawl. I love this one so much. I know I wanted it in the jewel tone, like the one I made my mom. But I am so glad I picked this one. It just makes me so happy. I put it on my mannequin over on the other side. And while I'm looking at you, I just happen to look over there. And it's so pretty just when you look at it from far away. I mean, it's pretty when you wear it. But just when you just look at the way the stripes go, especially the twisted stitches in there. It just makes something. I think you can see it. It's just beautiful. It's the pattern I designed. I loved it. I wanted to do a DK shawl. I think I got to do another one. Those are what I wear in the house, basically, is all DK shawls. And I love wearing them. It's just so snuggly and wonderful. And like the fingerling weight that I wear, I usually wear those out of the house. So I love this. It's Knit Picks yarn again. 
and it is the alpaca cloud which is so soft oh my god and i used um eucalyn as the um, wool wash guys y'all gotta try this out it is amazing like it's so soft and what happened was julie um i just got some yarn from her a couple of months ago and i asked her did you get a different base because it was so soft she's like no i used eucalyn I was like, it cannot be that, that it has to be something with the yarn. No, it's that wash. It's amazing. I can't tell you how much this softened this up. I have been reaching for this one constantly. I kind of want to wash my other DK weights in this. Well, the problem is then I got to block them. I think if once you wash, you have to block it. So I don't know if I really want to go do that, but it's just so much softer than the other ones. Once I washed it with that, it's just, it's like butter. I mean, I, I just love it. So get some eucalyn. It's amazing. I know the Crazy Sock Lady has some. That's where I got hers. I've got the Jasmine one, the Lavender, and the Eucalyptus. I bought the small bottles. But I'm definitely going to be upgrading to a large one for the Jasmine and Lavender. They smell amazing. But it's so soft. It's crazy. Oh, my God. Okay, anyways. So, <laughs> so again, this is Alpaca Cloud on... I hope I'm right on this. Okay, I'm going to say this was Audrey Carson... Marguerite and Lisette is this beautiful raspberry. I love just this stripe. I love stripey shawls and V-shape. They make me so happy. And then I decided to make it a little bit fancy by putting the Pico bind off at the end. It's so much fun to knit. Again, simple stockinette with just a little bit of twist going on. It's just wonderful. I, mean, you just, I haven't been able to think lately. So I've been just going for things with stockinette with have twists in it so I don't have to think. And I do miss my lace though. I gotta knit some things with lace. But that, oh, and I knit that on US 8 5 millimeter. All right. That is all my FOs. I promise. Oh my God. It's crazy. Next is my whips. All right. So this is the one that I've been telling you guys about that I have been knitting since 2016. I am never going to finish this, it feels like. It's so simple. But to do one repeat, which is what I decided, oh my God, I got notes and everything flying at me from this. I basically, to do one repeat, which is this to this, it's two hours. So in my head, I was like, I'm gonna do what the crazy sock lady does. I'm gonna knit for, instead of just for 30 minutes, I'm gonna do one repeat at a time because it's easier just to do one repeat for me than to do 30 minutes. So I was doing it. I did it for a while. I picked it up again over here. This is from Simply Serving. So I did one, two, three, four, and then I did five. I, oh no, six I did, right? Maybe it's five. Actually, I didn't put something over here. And basically, I'm put these over here so I don't have to keep counting constantly. It's crazy. So every repeat, I put a blue um, light bulb progress keeper right there. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> Mickey. He's dancing. <laughs> Mickey, please. I'm sorry. You make me laugh too much. Okay. You can go play with the balloon. <laughs> I love balloons. All right. And then every 10th one, I put a pink one. So I think I have to get up to 40 of these. <laughs> I am at... I'm in my 20s, I think. It's either... Yeah, I think it's like 39 I gotta go up to. I'm never gonna finish this. Maybe I should do one repeat a week. Yeah, because that's like 20, it's like half a year, about half a year mark. Maybe I should just do that. I like knitting it. I'm just, there's so much more I've got to knit. And it's the same thing over and over again. I'm just like, ah, I don't know. But I am using, what am I using? I don't even know what I'm using. I think this is Knit Picks Zings. No, not Knit Picks, Knitter's Pride Zings, US 6, 4 millimeter. The pattern is Vine Lace Shawl by Patterns. It came in this book, which actually that is the shawl right there. I had to do it in the same colors. I love it. I've knit two or three from this book already. 
This is an amazing book. I loved it. This is one of my first things I've ever bought when I was knitting. And I have devoured this book. And the yarn is Patterns Lace. The colorway is Patrina. Unfortunately, they do not make this anymore. And I might, I might also have another problem. I ran out of the yarn. I have this much left. I did find this in my stash. But I don't know if it's the trick of the light or if this is a different dye lot. I don't have the thing from this. That's another reason why I think I stopped knitting it recently because I saw that and I'm like, I have to look at this in the day. So it might have to stop or I just persevere, knit with this one. Hope I had it out. I didn't have it in a bin for it. It was on a bookcase downstairs above a heater. So I don't know if it yellowed a little bit because of that. It looks pretty close though. I think I'm just being OCD. I just finish it. I think I was saving this also for a hat that's in that book. But at this point, I just want to finish this wrap. I'm not sure if I even have another skein of this. I might. I know I have quite a few of these. Because again, when I first started knitting, I knit with only acrylic yarn. So anything that was at Michael's or Joann's, I pretty much bought when it was on sale. Because I didn't know what, how nice it is to work with the other stuff. So I have a lot of this. And I loved that book. So I think I had almost every color that they had. I don't know. But I think I might just have to do this. Because even if I bought this from someone else, you know, on Ravelry, I, um, they have a stash. Even if I bought it from them, what is the odds that it would be matching this? It might be a different shade. Who knows? I don't know. So I think I might just take my chance to see how it looks. But to rip this out would be a nightmare if I did make a mistake. Because it gets, it's mohair, it gets stuck. It's like, and you know what's really interesting about this? It's... You know, like regular mohair is very, very thin. This is a thick one. They say it's lace, but it's like fingerly weight mohair. So, I don't know. But then again, I could just stop it. Just do it like this instead of trying to wrap it around. I want to wear this with my white jacket that I have. But instead of, see, it doesn't go too far. So, I guess I could just use that as a regular wrap. And then I lost the yarn. Yeah, I'm doing good. <laughs> so, we will see. And then there's a little ruffle on it. And I'm going to use this for the ruffle part. I thought that was really pretty. Because I am in a quandary. I don't know what to do with it. We will find out. And it is in my non-finished bag. Yes, I'm using it. I need to order this yarn. I am just sad. I literally have to just finish the bind off in peach. I do not have this yarn. It is sad. It's a design I have. Again, I want to order more so I can make a small one and actually release this pattern at some point. It's my fun in the sun tote. I'm obsessed with making bags, but I got, I just like, I don't feel like buying cotton weight yarn. Nikki, stop making me laugh. <laughs> Nikki, please, please be a good boy. I love you. Please go in the other room. She make me laugh. God, that's so funny. <laughs> can't with him oh i'm drinking um plum deluxe i have my affiliate link down below it is the french tart black tea from the tea of the month i had this month love it it is so good it's got honey bush tea apple pieces apricots <sighs> love apricots so. this is my daunting abbey mug it says at my age let's say one must ration one's excitement i she is a genius. Oh my God. I can't wait. I'll wait to watch the new movie. I'm actually in debate on going to the theater because I missed the first one because of COVID and I didn't get to go see it. And I was like, I'm going to go in the luxury theater and order dinner and just enjoy it. And it didn't happen. And I'm kind of tempted to do this. I'm a little scared too, but I really want to watch in the movie theater because I love Downton. Oh my God. And then oh, my lipstick, my seat. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. It's got the beautiful house. I love the house. I want to go visit one year. Okay. So that's that. And speaking of another thing that I had to stop knitting because I ran out of yarn. I am not doing good with this mohair, people. Oh, mohair. This is my Habitation Throw by Curious Handmade, Helen Stewart. I am knitting it with Clark and L Year of Minis. So it's um, 52... 
colors. I actually took out two colors. They were very, very neon. So now it's only 50 colors, but you're supposed to do it with 24 colors. But this is what it looks like so far. It is massive. This is big, big square. I love massive blankets. So I have literally am down to this. That's it. I think I'm down to my last five colors. Can you believe this? And I had to stop because I need mohair. I got to put an order to Knit Picks. I just feel like I'm going to order from them. I want to order enough stuff so that I can, um, you know, make it worth my while and get free shipping. Even though it's insane that I have to get free shipping. But I'm like, that could be another scan of yarn that's shipping. So that's why I'm going to wait. I got to order it. But I did this much since you last saw me, I think. No, 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 wait. No, no. I did this much since you last saw it. This was when I picked it up again and did that. That's what it was. So I did a nice little chunk. I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen colors in it. And again, I think I'm down to five. And now I'm starting to do the double. Oh, no, wait, no, no, wait. It's one less. I'm already doing the doubles now. This is the... So I'm really down to the bottom thing because this is what the end of it looked like. I want to get this done. I will put in an order for Knit Picks soon. This, this is ridiculous. All right. And then my other blanket. This is because of my friend Katie of Katie Did Bags. This is all your fault, Katie. This is all your fault. <laughs> okay, seriously, Nikki, please go in the other room. Please, the people are going to get mad. Go in the other room. Please, honey, please. Begging you, please. Next time, Daddy's going to have to take you. <laughs> My comedian, I'm telling you, he's so bad. I told him I'm very self-conscious when I'm filming. So stay in the other room. And of course he didn't. <laughs> he keeps coming out. <laughs> so again, this is all Katie's fault. She contacted me and she's like, did you see this yarn? You have to try this yarn out. It's called Lion Brand's Cover Story. The Emery Colorway. Look at this thing. Oh my God. And it's bigger because I knit all this. I am just doing simple stockinette. I didn't even do a border or anything. I just want this as a simple, really, really large blanket. I think in the pattern that comes with the yarn, it was like 70 something stitches. And then there's an actual pattern. I decided to do 130, I think I'm on. So it's gonna be a really big blanket for this room because it goes so well with everything in here. And it's on a size us 11 8 millimeter needle i am not used to knitting with these big needles i'm not really a fan of it maybe i should have went up one size large but again i said i don't like big needles it hurts my hands after a while but i did this much and look at the colors this is a purple i don't know if you can see that it's purple tan this is actually a gray it's coming up blue in the picture and then a beautiful pink and then white it's just gonna go so well in this room and I, I'm always cold. My legs are always, always cold. So it's going to be lovely to snuggle under. I got two skeins of this. You're supposed to only have one skein. You can probably get one skein for a blanket from one skein. I got two. So I'm going to make this really, really big. And I got one other one. I don't remember the colorway. You'll see it when I start knitting it. And I'm going to knit that one for my boys. And I was tempted to get more. This Nikki's room, he has a full-size bed. I kind of wanted to knit a really big one. But I want to see how fed up I am by the time I'm done with this on um, knitting it because I didn't want to waste the money getting the yarn and I don't knit it so we will see but this is so much fun look at that it's bigger than my head and this is halfway through so it's even bigger normally craziness okay the next thing I am very very proud of I am knitting my like a cloud it is in my um, Bridgerton bag, which I love from Lila Styles Me. I love anything Bridgerton. It's just, it's, it's fulfilling my Jane Austen need. And then Sand, Sand, Sedition came out like the same exact week as this. And I didn't realize they were both coming out and I was going crazy trying to watch them all. Unfortunately, they ruined that show because the main character, main love interest decided he did not want to come back and film. I don't know why actors do that. It drives me crazy. He's like, yeah, my character was done. We, the show was canceled. But then they renewed it all of a sudden three years later or two years later. And everyone was all happy. And he's like, yeah, I'm done. 
I'm not going to do it anymore. It's a completely different show. It's not as good as the first season. I was very disappointed. But this was, this was amazing. Loved it. Go watch it. So I got that. I am so proud. I'm on a sweater kick. I want to knit all the sweaters. I don't, I'm not a sweater person because I, my, I get distracted very easily, but I want to knit all the sweaters. I want to knit a ranunculus, ranunculus, ranunculus. On. everyone's knitting that where I live in Westchester it's crazy I want to knit one of those I want to knit a love note those are my next things that I would really want to do and I forgot this other sweater that I knit a while ago I loved it but I it's a little small on me now so I want to knit another one of that but this is what I did on the like a cloud so I'm gonna say I'm trying to remember what I did because I have, I, have to, I have a couple things to say about this. I've changed the pattern a little bit. So let me see where. Okay. So, yes, 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 yes. All right. This is, this is where I picked it up. No, is it? Yeah, I'm going to say, this is where it was the last time you saw me. Was that I knit that. It's like... I mean, like that much I knit from there to there. Then this was what I picked up this time and knit. So I knit all the way down here. Then you have to go in the front and pick up. So I picked up the front and I did all the front. So now it's all connected. All I have to do is just knit this pattern all the way down to my desired length. And then I got to do the sleeves, which should be simple. I love this pattern. It is so cozy and squishy and waffly. I love it. And I definitely want to do this. I'm thinking I have black pearl from Volvine yarn that I've been holding for about five or six years. I got four skeins in her gnaw whale. I'm thinking about knitting another one of these. I know I should knit something else, but if this fits me as well as I think it's going to fit me, I definitely want to knit it in that in a dark color to go with everything. So I have my mauve and then I'll have a dark grayish purplish color. So, but what I did differently was when you pick up the stitches, there was going to be a big, like, um, stockinette line going down here. You can't really see where it is. So I tried it that way, and I noticed that was going to be a big stockinette going on, but you didn't start the pattern right off. Then I tried just starting it at where the pattern started. So again, I can't give away the actual pattern, but anyone that's knitting this will understand what I'm saying. So I started the non-stockinette pattern part right off when I picked up it didn't come out it still was like a big stockinette going on so what I ended up doing was I picked up stitches two rows down if that makes sense so like where the, the cast on is I went two stitches down and that's where I picked up it makes a little bit of a ridge it's not that bad. This yarn especially, it's very, very lightweight. So it didn't, it's not bothering me, the ridge. You can see it on this side. But on this side, it's practically invisible. Where if you did it like the directions, you would see that big line of stockinette on the shoulder. And that was driving me crazy, especially when you pick up and you start doing it over here. It's going to be all textured again. So... I, ha I think I love how I did it. I hope I remember how I did it. <laughs> I might even like the set next time I do it. When I do the cast on, I might just start at where the textured part is as opposed to the stock in that part. Just so I won't have to do that. Maybe I don't know if that would work, but the way I fudged it, it works fine. Like it's so smooth. So that is how I got rid of that. And I said it looks like you can see a little bit. It's very, I'm sure when it blocks out, it'll be a lot better. I don't know. Maybe I just see it because I'm like focused on it, but it's a lot better than just having a stock in that line. Like I was looking at other people's projects and I couldn't understand what that line was, you know, and some people had it, some people didn't, which I don't know how the people that didn't have, unless they did what I did. So, but it really worked out well. I'm glad I did it. If any of you, want to knit this and you have questions, feel free to contact me. Anyone with any kind of knitting, just contact me. I'll be glad to help you. Even if it's someone else's pattern, I don't care. I love helping people with knitting. But that is what I did 
to get this to work. And I'm so happy I did. And I can't wait to knit this, like have it completely knit up. And let me see. Sorry, I'm looking at my show notes. It is Like a Cloud by Hohi Locatelli. Knit Picks Twill Fingerling, the Rose Watercolor. Oh my God. The Mauve. Love it. And I'm using Knit Picks Majestic Needles, US 4 3.4 millimeter. I am enjoying knitting on the wood needles so much again. It's insane. I miss knitting with these. I, the reason why I stopped was because they get scratchy after a while if you knit with them. And I've been using a nail file and I've been smoothing them down with it because they have a polish side and a the regular nail file part. So, and it's been helping. I haven't done it with this one, but another um, wooden needle I had, I was doing with. These are holding up really well and they have a really great point, believe it or not. You know, for wood, this is an amazing point. I kind of want to try Luca needles, but again... I, that's a lot of money and then to get the scratchiness after a while but everyone keeps saying how wonderful their needles are I'm kind of tempted to get some but I love my knit picks they're wonderful and they're so pretty look at all the colors on them okay so that's that one I am almost done I swear <laughs> it's been a crazy two months I know and then I've got a lot of acquisitions and a story to tell I'm so happy I went out of the house for once Okay, that is down here. Ah. That is my son again. My little troublemaker. <laughs> no, my troublemaker is Justin. <laughs> He's my angel, this one. He's my funny angel. <laughs> I'm a hey, Deke, so Nikki, please. Okay, I'm Thank you. Oh my gosh. My husband's like, no, I'm taking both of them. And he's like, I don't want to go. And I was like, oh, he's older. He'll be good. <laughs> how can you get mad at that seriously okay so this is by the bay co bag i've had this forever i'm always afraid to use it because it's a light color i'm afraid i'm gonna get um dirty which you can see there's a lot of lint on it but i love their bags they're so much fun all right so this is my stephen west shawlnography shawl i made a dent y'all i made a dent I'm so happy Oh my gosh. Okay. So when you saw me last, I was on this wedge right there. Again, I probably could have knit this a lot more, but I was enjoying it so much that I would prolong it when I don't want to think I would start knitting on the wedge. So let me show you. Clue one. No, I think clue one down to here. Clue two was this and then both wedges. And that's where I started again. And then this is clue three. Let me see. Yeah, clue three is right here. Clue three was super short. Oh my gosh. Clue two went on forever. And then clue two, I guess because it had brioche and people were like, oh my God, so many stuff. Like two seconds, I finished it. It was crazy. And now I just got the border, which is clue four. And I stopped because I had to do some other things. And I wanted to show you guys before I finished it. So let me go over the colors. So I am knitting this on Knit Picks Caprita, Capretta yarn. Sorry, I'm horrible at pronouncing things. And the colors are, the pink is the blush. The mauve is Magnolia Heather, which I love that name. The purple, oh, there we go. Lavender is lilac, which is weird because lilac is more of a pinkish color than a bluish color. This is more lavender in my opinion sagebrush and moonstone heather no sage and moonstone heather not sagebrush something else sagebrush but that nikki please go in the other room honey please okay. <sighs> i'm sorry but that is how far i got i just have the border and this will be off the needles and i am knitting this on a uh, us4 3.5 millimeter and my little rose Point. I could finally start using these again. Justin is not taking them and I don't have to worry about him doing anything bad with them. So yay, I can start using them, which makes it a lot happier. These did fall off the needle and I was having a breakdown when that happened. So that's why I started using them again. And he's been good so far. He'll be like, oh, it's so pretty. He plays it for one minute and he puts it back. So yes, progress people. <laughs> I can start using my stuff. Now I can be put out breakable things hopefully soon and I'll be really happy. They did break my tablet this morning. was not happy about that. <sighs> That's the end of the tablet. Okay. 
So I did cast on something. I've been wanting to cast on for a long time. I don't know whose bag this is. I want to say it's a finch's nest. Oh, there is one. Yeah, it is a finch's nest. It's beautiful pink flowers. All right. I did the Bronte shawl from Lindsay Fowler. <laughs> I was so excited to cast this on. It is such a beautiful pattern. But then I felt like I had to work on other things. So that's all I got right now. That's all I got. But look at that lace. Oh my God, it's so pretty. I love it. I love it. I love it. <sighs> all right. And I am knitting this. It's all Sweet Sparrow yarn. And it is on the Magpie base, US 5, 3.75 millimeters. Now, this color is like a cloud. Apparently, I like that a lot, like clouds. It looked bluer when it was in the skein than when it was cast on. So here's my conundrum. This one, I'm not sure what the name of it is. I was gifted this from Get Your Yarn Wish Granted. And it's from like a club that um, Julie had. I want to say it's called Treasures of Isengard. I know it's um, Lord of the Rings inspired. But I'm afraid they're too close. I don't know. I wish this was more blue. I'm thinking. And I don't want to rip it out. So this might go to something else, but I, sad things, I really wanted this in here. So I don't know if I want to try it or it will be too bright. I mean, too light. And then when I get my third color in, which is basically Alma, which is my go-to green from Julie, it goes so beautifully with pinks and purples. This is like the perfect green for that. But I asked her not to put the purple speckles in it. Usually, Alma usually has speckles. This is just the plain green. And that's going to be my third color. It does look beautiful and I'm looking at it on camera. I just don't know if they're too close. I That's the thing that always drives me crazy when you knit something, you think it's the contrasty enough. And I know you do that black and white picture thing you could do, but you, honestly, you don't really know till you knit it, what you're gonna think. But I do love these three colors together. My other color I was debating on putting in, which I actually unfortunately started using for something else. It is in my last whip. I'm going to call this my camp, I uh, know, glamping socks. I was going to do camping trails, but I decided to change to glamping. But it's peach fizz. So I was going to maybe, it definitely is a difference. These three, oh my God, they are pretty together. I don't know what to do. So this would definitely give me contrast. It is really pretty. Maybe one day I'll just design something with these three. I don't know. I don't know. But I didn't want... This is the main skein that got me started with the Bronte Sister Shawl was this one. I don't know. Maybe get rid of this. And... No, I definitely like it better with the green if I'm going to do these three. But then if I do these, these are beautiful too. I don't know. But this, would, this would be really pretty as a shawl. Julie, I might be ordering more yarn from you. I might just have to. These are gorgeous together. I don't know. But anyways, I would have to order more yarn anyways because I am using this now in the glamping socks. So basically, this is Desert Vista Dye Works on her Viso base. And it's called Gradient Gourds. It's these beautiful peaches, so rust to teals to white, to a um, tan, and then there's a little mustard yellow in it. It is gorgeous. And I'm do mixing it with the peach. And this is the pattern I came up with. So again, I'm in between glamping or camping trails this is simply serving progress keeper. I don't know. I had changed the pattern also because when I was doing it, all right, backstory. So when I knit knit through the back loop or color work, I have to go up a size needle. So I'm knitting this one on Signature Needle Arts, which by the way, the tips on these, amazing. And I'm knitting them on 2.5 millimeters, which is a 1.5 US. 
And I was like, I'm probably going to knit this because I tried knitting the dosy dough from the crazy sock lady. About three times I tried knitting that. Every time I knit it, it's way too tight on me. I don't know why. It drives me crazy. So I was like, okay, I'm slipping stitches. When I do color work, if I do a color work sock, I have to go up to a size two needle. So, and the slip stitch, I think it's like either 1.5 or two. So I'm slipping stitches in here. And I don't know if it's because of the ribbing in it or what I'm doing. I know I changed it because originally I had more slip stitches and I thought it was going to be way too tight and the back was coming up like crazy. Like see how like it was looking like that, you know? So now it's more even the way I'm doing it now. So I did change the design. I might make a cowl with that other design. So it will look like this, but it's a little bit different. But I don't know. I tried this on. It felt big on me. It is very stretchy. It doesn't look like it's stretchy, but it's very stretchy. So I might have to rip this out and go down to a US 1. It is in timeout right now because of that. And I wanted this done by Sock Camp so it could have been like a pattern for it. That's another reason why I called it glamping or camping trails. But I got to try it on again, see if it's too big. Hopefully when I knit it in the US 1, if I do take it out, it will fit me. I don't want to waste yarn by knitting in this, then have to rewind because I said I want to see if I can get a cow out of this. I mean, worst comes worst, I just order another skein of this and beg her to knit, um, to dye this. I think she does it in the fall anyways. These two colors are gorgeous together, too. This is like my go-to peach. She makes my go-to. Julie makes my go-to yarns, let me tell you. So I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. I'm going to try on, see if it's really bothering me. Worst comes worst, I just messed my self up and I knit a second time it's the wrong size and then I gotta um take it out a second time and re-knit it in a size two again 1.5 again I don't know but it seems too big on me right now so it, which makes me happy for one reason because then I'm not worried that this is gonna be too tight for other people to knit if it's ends up fitting me if it's too big for me on this then it it's easy for everyone to knit I was getting a little nervous, like, because like what I said with the dosy dough, -si -do, am I going to have a hard time? Do I have to put a note in there or something? But it seems very nice for me. So we will find out. And it is in my Molly Klein's bag, the fortune cookies. I love my fortune cookie food. Anything oriental food, I love it beyond belief, let me tell you. Okay. Oh, dear. Okay, I'm making a mess over here. Still. All right, I'm almost done, Nikki. Please, okay. please, honey, please. I don't want to play with my toys. Can you go in the other room, honey? Okay. Thank you. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> my baby. Okay. He's doing a funny walk as he goes in the other room. Okay. So I'm going to show you my acquisitions. There is a lot. It's not as bad as it looks. It's not. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to show you is what I got on local yarn store day and i'm so excited because i actually went to a store i have been wanting to go out on local yarn store day for i don't know how long it's been a while it has been so long and i've been wanting to do it and i never do it i did go one time to knit in public day Let's see if i could do that this year too unless it passed i don't think it passed yet but i went to my local launch store it's in mount kisco it's called pick up every stitch and I met my friend Katie from Katie Did Bags there. I also had a surprise that Kristen from Bull and Vine Yarn was there. And Jonah, jo, Joan, Anna, Joan, oh my God, I am so sorry. I always can't pronounce your name. Katie even tried to help me say it right. I want to call her Joanna. Is Jonah, Jonah, oh God, I don't know. But she's from Knit Together with Kim and Jonah and then um, Joanna. I got to call it. I'm so sorry. And then Volan Vine's friend Tanya was there and she was so wonderful. I loved her. So we just sat there and knit all day long. It just felt so good to knit with other people. I haven't done that. I, I don't even know. I, I think I went to Katie's house once last year because she has little kids. She doesn't like people coming over because of little kids and I'm, I, don't really go out at all either because of Justin. He's not vaccinated either. But it just felt so nice to sit there and knit. And I knew Kim and Joanna from um, right before COVID. They had, an, um, we were doing a, a knit group 
So I went to two knit groups and then COVID hit and we had to stop. That's why they're doing a podcast now. Go check it out. It's really good. But it just felt so good to be there and be able to knit with other people. It just felt so nice. I can't even describe how happy I was. Again, I also the first time I wasn't without kids. I mean, see what I go through? <laughs> I must get up off the couch like 70 times a day. I can, this way I, I, I'm so scatterbrained. I can't finish anything. So it just felt good to sit there for, I think we were there four hours, maybe even longer, just knitting. Yeah, I think it was, no, was it four? Maybe three hours because I think they closed around four or five and I got there around one. Oh, yeah, before, maybe even five hours. Then. Anyways, but so they closed. It was funny because I got lost going there. He goes, I remember where their old store was because I remember passing it right before COVID. I'm like, oh my God, there's a knitting store here. And this is the one Katie talks about. And then COVID hit, I never went there. I was like, let me go in the spring. No, I never went. It is the cutest, sweetest store ever. They have so many yarns that I want to try. I, a lot of times I go in yarn stores, I get freaked out because they're mostly tonals. This one had a lot of tonals in it too. But basically I go there, I'm like, I shouldn't need a sweater. I don't have a sweater in mine. I don't want to spend that much money to buy a sweater right now. So I don't like going into yarn stores that much because I just get panicky. This one is so cute. They had so many colors there. It was amazing. They had some speckled yarn, which I thought was amazing. Because a lot, as I said, the ones I've been to mostly have all tonal. So they had a lot of different things. They had a beautiful nearest pride needle set. They had the mindful collection. Oh my God, I love the mindful collection. I want that beautiful. I don't know if you see it. Well, actually, I did buy. This is what the mindful collection looks like. This is the stitch markers from it. They had a sale for 30% off. Fortunately, it did not have the needles. I don't know if I would have bought the needles right now because I have so many needles, but I want it. But basically, the case for the needles would look like a ginormous of this. How cute is that? And then you open it up and it comes out and then it has all the interchangeable needles. And these are, it's very into Buddha and stuff like that. And I forgot what it's called exactly, but it has the char charcas. And then these are all the stitch markers. They're all silver stitch markers with the charcas on the char I'm not saying it right. I know I'm not. That's what the stitch markers look like. So they have that whole area. They have a lot of bags there. It was just a beautiful store. And if you want that way, it's a lot of yarn. You go this way. And it was like two big tables. We took up one whole table and we were just sitting there knitting all day long. I did not expect to do that. I thought I was going to be in and out. I had Nikki's baseball game. He's doing Little League. Unfortunately, he doesn't like it. I'm trying to get him to like it. But um, again, next year he probably won't do it if he doesn't want to do it. I just said, just try it one year because when you go to high school, you're going to regret not doing any sports in case you decide you want to do it. You need some kind of background. So he's doing it for one year. But after the game, I was like, okay, I'm going to go there. I'm going to meet Katie. We're going to be there for like a minute. You know? Now, once I got there, I did not want to leave. We stayed there forever. It was wonderful. And this is a bag Katie gave me. She had this fabric for the longest time. I kept saying I want a friend's bag. So she made me it. Isn't it cute? If you buy it in her store, though, it has a black bottom. Again, I'm not a fan of black because working at Bloomingdale's for so long. 13 years and that's all I wore. I know I'm wearing it now, but. <laughs> so I usually I like different colors. And what's funny is we had a joke. My living room is the color of Monica's apartment. And because I worked in Bloomingdale's, they had the, is it in here? I don't, well, when you look at Friends, they have this really weird kind of bluish vase. And it has like a face on it. I have that vase. So we were saying that maybe I should buy the yellow frame and hang it on the wall in there. Because that's Monica's apartment. Maybe next time I'll film in there. That's the toy room right now, so it's always a mess in there. <laughs> but I got the Friends bag. Fountain. Pivot, pivot. <laughs> I love it. So this is the yarn. While I was sitting there, it was really funny. A lady came up to me out of nowhere and she was asking my opinion on yarn. And one of the colors, well, two of the colors she had came home with me. I was like, oh my God, you're going to knit a shawl. You have to knit it in this. And even Katie, she's like, these are Tara colors. So this is Periwinkle Sheep. And it is the Rose Quartz colorway. It is coming out much tanner. It's more of a rose gold in person. Yeah, you're not getting it in here. It's more rose gold. It's a gorgeous colorway. 
I wonder if I could do something with this to make it a little, no, that's blowing it out. No, it's not going to come out. Sorry. And then this one is called summer dress. This is more like a creamy kind of yellowish color. And then it's got mauves in it and then green and orange speckles and some purple in there. It's beautiful. Again, it's not coming out the way I want it to come out. I'm so sorry, but these two are going to look so good together. Hopefully when I take actual pictures of the finished shawl, it's going to look really good. I don't know. Then I got this one. I've never heard of this company. Seven floor yarn, but look at those speckles. Oh my God. It's got teals, purples, mauves. The main base, I think, is a very light mauve or pink. Um, some dark purple in there. It's got all of my colors. All my absolute favorite colors are in this. Look at that. Raspberry, I think, right there. So I bought this yarn primarily because it's not nice to go to a yarn store and not knit with their yarn. But I've never been there, so I was knitting with my knit picks, and I feel so bad doing that. So I bought this specifically so when I go there, if I knit again, I meet Kirsten and Katie and Joanna, I got yarn. And then I got this other colorway. This one I got into trouble with because I saw... Why is that going like that? Can I go away? It won't go away now. I don't know. I hope there's no line in there that you guys are seeing. I'm seeing a line. But this is Julie Asenin Fino. It's kind of like a grayish purple with um, green and purple specks in it. It's called Charlotte, the colorway. Oh, and this colorway was, what's the name of it? Be speckled. Definitely see it. <laughs> But they also had next to this. But again, I bought these two for socks. So when I go there, I have something to knit. But they got me into trouble because they had over there a mauve. And then I think it was a light pink. I don't know. I took a picture of it so I would have it. I want to knit sweaters with it. As I said, I'm on a sweater dream kick. Here it is. Yeah, one was like a light pink. It was called Romance. The The mauve one is called Marangages. I don't know. Well, that was the colors. I can't really see it that well, but I want those. That's my next purchase, I think. Yes. So I did that. It wasn't that bad. They, uh, the periwinkle was 30% off, too, so that was awesome. So that's all I bought that day. But then I got into trouble because one of my favorite dyers, unfortunately, has quit dyeing yarn. And I was in shock and I was so depressed. And I've worked with her quite a lot. It's artistic fully. She decided to stop dyeing. She wasn't being happy with it anymore, which that is a good reason. If it was for COVID, it would have killed me. But because she wasn't happy dyeing anymore, I totally get it. Wish you all the luck. But I went crazy. So get ready. This is a lot. I put it in my Knit Picks tote bag. This is the first time I've ever used it. I just to put all the yarn I got. Because I did go OCD. It was 40% off. So it's not as bad as it looks, everyone. It's not bad. So this one is Frog Belly. Pink Maiden Sock Set. This is really cool. I wanted this around Christmas. It came for Red Mini. She Unfortunately, she only had this one skein. She basically, with these three, she went through her, she was cleaning up and she found a lot of skeins, some more skeins. So this is my second order. <laughs> I did two orders. I'm bad. But this one was in it and I thought this was the colorway I wanted around Christmas I missed out on. I am so happy it is. It is called Light Up Your Holidays. Just imagine that with red mini. How beautiful is that? I got to find red now. This is for something else. Let me show you that later. I'm just going to show you all artistic lily right now. In Full Bloom. Tea and Crumpets. I got two skeins of that one. Yeah, I was lucky I could get two skeins. And this is another Frog Belly. But the, the base on these three look almost exactly alike. The speckling is different. I'm kind of tempted to make this into maybe a t-shirt instead of a shawl or socks or whatever, because I already have a sock yarn for that. And it's different, the space. This looks more of a cream. 
And this is more peachy, it looks like to me. So I, maybe she dyed them all around the same time and end up getting more peach in the frog belly. I don't know. But they're different colors, it looks like. So I'm, I think I could make a t-shirt out of this or something. I don't know. I miss her yarn. I'm already crying. And got two more. This one I'm actually really excited about because I always wanted this color. I Heart Chocolates. Mauvey goodness. And then Vintage Forest. So I got that. I unfortunately didn't, she didn't have any of her Wild West collection. Every year I said I wanted the Wild West collection. And every year I said, oh, she's going to die it again next year. Let me get something that they're, I'm not going to be able to get. So I ended up getting the I Heart Chocolate. At least that was another colorway that I always wanted. I was happy about that. Oh, and one more. Perched on Plum. Nikki, come on. All right. Sorry. Almost done. Sorry. And... <laughs> Sorry, Nick, Nikki, Nikki, please go in the other room. I'm almost done. I swear that you can play all you want. Okay, honey? Please, please. Thank you. And this is why I don't get to podcast that much. <laughs> all right. I finally did an order to Holly Dye Works. I fell in love with this collection. Again, Jane Austen obsessed. That's me. And it was Jane Austen inspired. And it's peach. I love peach. Peach and mauve. Make me happy. So this is Barton Cottage. And I'm going to pair it with Vienna. Let's look how pretty they look together. That's going to be a shawl design. I don't know when, but it's going to be one. Then she has this also as the Sense and Sensibility mini set. This part of me wants to put that with that, but I don't know. But look how cute these are. And again, these are really pretty yellows that usually I'm not a yellow person, but I like these are very nice and pastel-y looking. Then strawberry trifle. Again, it's like peachy pinks. Folk school engagement. I love peach with green, so I had to get this. And then she had a club. I think it's the Great English Bake Off. I unfortunately don't have the stitch marker. I have to go find where I put it. But this is the yarn that came with it. It's from Itty Bitty Delights with Stitch Marker. But this is called Raspberry Madelines. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I love it. I love this. I love all these. I should not have bought so much. She has more I want. I am definitely going to become a regular customer of her because I am so happy with this yarn. It's so soft. She might use Euclid when she does her wash with it. I don't know, but it's so nice and soft. So I think I found another favorite dyer. Mm -hmm. She's going to be right up there with Sweet Sparrow yarns and Lizzie Ann yarns and Volavine. Let me tell you, I'm feeling it. I am definitely going to be ordering a lot more yarn from her. So that is it. I know it was a long one, but I did it. <laughs> I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and um, happy knitting everyone. And I hope to see you in a month from now. You want to say goodbye, Nikki? Bye. <laughs> My little funny face here. My cheeky monkey. My cheeky monkey. Oh, that, that is Toy in, Toya's um, Instagram. I think it was called Cheeky Monkey. I think, yeah. That's so, so if you want to follow her too, I'll put them on the down bar. Okay. Say bye. Say bye. 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 Bye, bye. bye everyone.